November 24th, 1992, who the number one song before Whitney Houston would give in her reign over the rest of the year would be The Heights How You Talk to an Angel, Home Alone 2, who was dominating the holiday box office, and Song of the Hedgehog 2, Song of Elise, Ace in, in the US and Europe, three days after initialization in Japan, and as someone who has finally beaten it multiple times in multiple formats, in fact, at here today I'm going to be talking about Song of the Hedgehog 2 as my all time favorite Sega Genesis game. So let's begin. While the first game may not have been the first killer app for Sega, as I pointed out before, or let alone the Genesis for that matter, or the Mega Drive it was, as it was known as near Japan, it was arguably the first to show what the console was capable of making a stand up with the of Nintendo, and with its success, the sequel was naturally one to build on that. That's, I mean, I'm getting into this in the other points of this video, but it definitely captures you what made the first game work, refined what didn't quite work as well, oh, and add many interesting and new ideas of its own. My favorite, and easily the one that has been a fixture of every subsequent installment to date, is the spin dash. I mean, not only in terms of taking out enemies and finding new passageways, but also just building up speed so it makes certainly easier press stage as much easier to get through. And I'll definitely be continuing to talk about more in this video, in this game, so here we go. I've argued before that not every single game has to reinvent the wheel. Hey, all sometimes just has to make sure it's tuned a bit more finely. And this one is no exception. And I mean, I mean the graphics definitely they run a bit smoother than they did in the first game, which is useful with the speed and platforming elements. And on while well, I'm on that subject, I mentioned spin this moment ago, but the gameplay definitely feels they got more of a handle on it this time around. You know what I mean, for ideas I want to implement, but they didn't really have quite the best handle them at the time. I mean, the Labyrinth Zone um, was definitely a noble example of of this, like how not only combining like the pet peeves of like the underwater stairs, but also making them a maze. And even like a more subtle example, like his designs, but more slender than it was in the first game. I guess running at something like speed, stuff that helps offset the chili dogs, huh? Yeah. And be that as it may, I definitely may also enjoy how the other subjects and the ways they change up the formula. I mean, again, this plan of C that's been going as basically my entire fandom where I'm not against changes to the formula if the changes complement it instead of clashing with it. So and this I'm gonna be explaining why. Yeah. Another reason why this definitely is my my favorite entry in the series, series original installments and on Genesis because of how it much expanded its size and scope, and not just because of how many tries this passage here. The original game had had six stages, and it's not counting special stages, each three acts apiece. He's the only three act stage was the what biggest one Metropolis Zone. In the relation to Superman, I assure you, you. Know, but each of the other stages, even though there were only two X each, there were ten of them, and include and not including like the final one against the Death Egg. I'm just showing you, and they were physically larger and had more patch to go through. I mean, do you want to go for speed, or do you want to try final secrets? They hold both intentional and otherwise. It is a utter joy and I'm actually still finding things in there after all these years I mean I first played this game when I was five years old and every run through I've had since then has found something new to enjoy okay. which I'll definitely be detailing even further in the second half of this video I've mentioned this before when talking about other video games 
with Pokemon being a key example of that. Uh, it's, but it's not just making decisions in general that can be tricky, but making knowing how to make the right ones to a game. And fortunately, this one's a key example of that. While hell you know, has often been a point of contention in the fan base and the press for years now. When done properly, they can become fixtures in the entire franchise and pretty much one to own right. I mean, with Miles Tails Prior being, being the notable example, contrasting Sonic's speed and confidence with flight, the ability to swim, and also just being like a younger her character who's highly intelligent and sees Sonic as a big brother and best friend in many ways, which is carried over into close to every subsequent incarnation to date. It's which even in this year's movie movie being making good use of that characterization as well, I mean oh I mean, imagine that my spoiler review and also gameplay wise in terms of stages, things like ancient ruins, hence giant casinos with massive slot machines, chemical plants or finds run amok. Like, I mean, they built upon what the first game established without you know, clashing with it. It's a difference between like adding a little bit of spice to your dish and dousing it some sauce you can't even tell what you're eating anymore. This game. And while the first one may have established as, as what Sonic could do who as bar for quality and to show that Sega had just as much, much to do in video games Nintendo could at the time, this arguably augmented its status and even though the series through subsequent games and adaptations has gone through many variations of quality, this is easily the one that set a bar her and caused close to every subsequent installment to owe, owe a, a variable debt to it. Likewise, many of the people who worked on the game he went on, on to still be the key to the series, but also other projects. I mean, Mark Cerny, who started Sega's Technical Institute, later became a key figure in developing the PlayStation and is still oh, highly involved at Sony five console generations later. The fact that every that many consoles, including former rivals, have seen their own ports and even on mobile have been managing to find someone will still always have a special place in my heart for it ever since that first Christmas. I got a chance to try the game and the Genesis for the very first time. That is why Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is a Genesis game. Aim. I'm going to have to rethink and rework some of the other content I have planned in light of recent events, but for now, I hope you all enjoy this nostalgic look at one of my favorite Head Genesis games ever. And I wish you all a very happy Thanksgiving. So, take care everyone. Mm-hmm.